Hey Huskies, I'm outside Bakeless Center for Humanities where we're going to head inside and talk to Dr. Neil Strine about the political science major. Hi, Dr. Strine. How are Hi, you today? Kendra, good. Can I ask you a few questions? Sure. Um, my first question would be, what is your favorite area of research and why? Um, my favorite area of research is in the area of uh, American politics. Um, but more recently, I've been working with, uh, actually, believe it or not, uh, Supreme Court confirmation hearings. Uh, myself and a colleague at Indiana University, Kokomo, out in Indiana, are working on um, uh, looking at confirmation hearings in the, in the Senate and believe it or not levels of civility uh, in the United States Senate so um, I just American politics is just exciting to me and you know there's always something going on before Congress so that's my my favorite area very cool um, my next question would be um, what are some interesting careers that students who were in the political science major um, now are currently working in um, uh, I would say about 25% maybe of our students end up going to law school. I have had uh, quite a few students uh, since I've been here in 2003 who have gone through our legal studies program uh, and then they go into law school. Uh, they, um, you know, we've had students go to Dickinson uh, Law School, uh, Temple, uh, Drexel, Duquesne. Um, you know some of the really good uh, law schools and uh, you know and, and now a lot of them are practicing um, actually as a matter of fact one of my uh, stu former students uh, works in uh, New York City he's actually got two uh, law offices one in New York City and one in New Jersey he just opened but he just opened a uh, law practice in Manhattan um, so our students you know do uh, go to law school um, we've had students work in government. For example, I've have a student uh, had a student uh, a few years ago uh, graduate and now works for the Veterans Administration in Philadelphia. And after about ten years, uh, she's now a supervisor, and she probably earns more than me. <laughs> uh, so she's doing quite well. Uh, we also have students when they graduate go into uh, fields such as uh, higher education. Um, we have a former student that. Uh, is a uh, director of financial aid at a university. Um, uh, I think it's in, in the New York area, or New York's, um, upstate New York. Uh, we also have um, one of our most recent graduates is the director of a home health uh, agency here in Bloomsburg. Um, you know, there's there are, uh, quite a few, in quite a few areas, but you can go into even finance. We have uh, a friend of mine, uh, called me about uh, a few weeks ago looking for people in political science to work in his, his finance firm. I said, really finance? He said, yeah. He said he likes the way that the political science students think. So he even got a job in, in finance. So whether it's in you know higher education, government, we've actually had a, a student work for the Chris Christie uh, campaign for governor. So we worked at some campaign work. Um, so there's quite a few, quite a few areas. I mean, you don't have to go into law, go into government, or you know, working with the university or college. Um, but it's a very versatile degree. Very cool. Um, what would you say is your fa favorite class to teach our political science students? I think my favorite class. I th I would like to t uh, say there are two that would tie for my my top two classes. Uh, my the 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 one class that I really enjoy teaching is Constitutional Law 2, which is Civil Rights and Civil Liberties. I run my Constitutional Law classes like they would be run at a, at a law school. So, for example, so I've used the uh, Socratic method. You know, when a student gives me a, uh, an answer, I'll question their answer, and we'll go back and forth uh, in class. And the exciting thing for Constitutional Law 2 for me is that that, that looks at civil liberties and civil rights, and when you, look at civil liberties and civil rights that can be you know, a lot of people have strong opinions on uh, civil liberties for example the first amendment uh, and you know the uh, establishment of religion so we get into some really fun exciting charged uh, conversations in class 
and uh, that's where I encourage students to challenge each other's ideas, challenge me in class, I challenge them, and it's just a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, in my other class I like to teach is a class called Political Violence. It's a class that uh, basically I created when I, when I came to Bloomsburg University. And in Political Violence we look at why, it's a wide ranging class, we look at why revolutions occur, uh, we'll look at genocide, um, we look at um, assassinations, um, I have a unit on conspiracies and conspiracy theories, which is a lot of fun to look at. And then uh, related to the conspiracy and conspiracy theory, we also I also have a unit on the Kennedy assassination. And we look at whether or not uh, there was a second shooter up in the gra grassy knoll, or um, you know if, if, if it was just Oswald that, that killed uh, Kennedy. Um, so that, that's kind of a, a fun class. And then at the, their, their final uh, paper is to investigate a situation dealing with political violence and then they analyze it uh, as if they were on a, as, as if they were on a cable news program like Fox News or CNN and they would be asked, okay, you know, you're an expert on political violence, why did this occur? And so they'll, they'll you know, uh, provide, um, they'll, you know, provide on, in their paper, uh, they'll discuss the theories of political violence and then how that applied to the the situation that they're investigating. My final question is, how can students get involved with political science outside of the classroom? Oh, that's great. And one of the things when you're when you're at college, you know, Kendra, that you should always get involved with um, your professor outside of class. You should be also always get involved in classes because, or outside of class, because, you know, when you when you're looking for a job, or you go to graduate school or law school, you know, a lot of these people, these places are going to ask, you know, what did you do besides go to school? You know, because there's there's more school than just going to class. Well, you should always go to class. Uh, so we have lots of activities in the political science department. Um, I'm actually the director of the speech and debate team or the forensics team um, here um, on campus. Uh, we have mostly political science majors. Obviously, they're on it since I'm the, the director, but we have all different types of majors on the, the speech and debate team. Uh, we travel uh, to other universities for a weekend where we do, where we compete in speech and debate tournaments. Um, the, um, recently, last year we went to Ottawa, Canada. Uh, two years ago we went to Clearwater Beach, Florida in January uh, for a tournament. Um, and actually this year we're going to Charleston, South Carolina for a speech and debate tournament. Uh, but those are those. We usually have one big tournament a year, but usually we travel to uh, schools in Maryland, Virginia. Um, uh, yeah, basically Maryland, Virginia is actually where we end up traveling. Usually on, on the East Coast. Um, and students, we have different types of debate, public speaking. Uh, we do interpretation of literature, like poetry and prose readings. Um, that we have students that will work with the new students to get them coached and I will coach students to get them ready to go. Um, you can earn college credit, uh, college credit just for participating on the speech and debate team. Um, you know, all you have to do is just attend three, participate in three tournaments a semester for, um, and then compete in three events per tournament at each of those tournaments and you can get a one credit A that counts towards graduation. Now, I'm assuming I say A, it's an easy A, uh, I think, to get, but you, but you do have to work for it. Um, uh, so we have the speech and debate team. Uh, we also have, within the department, the Model UN program. Um, uh, Dr. Dorsler works with students where, you know, where we, they go to a Model UN conference where they are assigned to be a, a certain country, and then the students then learn about the policies of that country and then represent them at a, at a, a mock, uh, United Nations uh, gathering and so that's a lot of fun for the students and then we also have the political science student association where uh, Dr. Chanel uh, will meet with the students uh, I think once twice a month I believe they have their meetings but they'll do things like you know have speakers in they'll they have a trip to Washington DC um, you know, there's a variety of events that, that the, the Public Science Student Association um, engages in. And then we also have at Bloomsburg a, an honorary, a, a chapter of the Honorary 
political science fraternity or society uh, called Pi Sigma Alpha, and the national it's a national honor society for political science students, um, and you know that that always looks good on a resume. So, but there there are, there are plenty of things to do, you know, and um, uh, our students stay busy here in political science. They have fun. Thank you so much for all of your information. Okay, you're welcome. If law and government is something that interests you, you can actually make it your field of study here at BU. Be sure to check out our political science major.